next uh, is about the automotive business solution unit, and we are going to hear from Mr. Kataoka and Maoka. So um, uh, please uh, turn your video on and share the screen. Uh, yes, uh, hello. I am Kataoka from the automotive side. So on today, uh, we, uh, Maoka and Kataoka, will be introducing you about our automotive strategy. So um, here's about the market trend. Now, the impact of COVID-19, we sort of changed, uh, evolved from the previous case to pace. So the automotive market trend is evolving. So the previous shared service concept has sort of lost steam and it's more, people are focusing on more on personalized uh, aspect. And in this situation, the um, automated, like automated driving and also electrified, that's EV. As for these two, uh, there still is strong opportunity for a demand growth. Moving on. So this slide, uh, it looks at the overall demand for the system. So again, uh, it really is coming from the COVID-19 impact, starting from the left-hand side. So if you look at the overall demand, you can see that uh, there's this drop in 2020, and uh, up until 2025, you see this minus 8%. Uh, there is going to be a decline uh, compared to the previous uh, trajectory. Uh, but then if you look at EV or ADAS DCU demand, if it's for EV, it's actually growing by 3%. Uh, in other words, uh, there is an improved trajectory compared to what we've seen before. Uh, ADAS side, not really much change, just minus 1%. So again, for these two fields, uh, there's this high growth trend, Hager expected. And uh, that is why we are very much focusing on these areas. Moving on. So here, we look at the semiconductor demand. The left-hand side shows demand by application. So again, EV and ADAS, uh, both are enjoying high growth. And on the right-hand side, now here, we look at demand by product. If you look at the demand by product, you can see SOC, power, analog, it would be the areas where uh, high growth is expected. So um, we, of course, would be looking into high uh, growth application and product as we try to expand uh, what we'd be able to do. But again, uh, we're not just going to focus on each and individual, like just SOC, just MCU, just power. That's not a, going to be our approach. It's really about trying to go for winning combo. So uh, like MCU plus analog could be one example, but we do believe that's going to give us a very good effect uh, in making sure we'd be able to find stable growth in what we'd be able to do. Uh, moving on. Next, uh, I'd like to introduce about Renaissance direction and our solution. This slide speaks about SOC strategy. As uh, we find this digitalization trend, the vertical integrated business model has sort of evolved. In other words, we find platformers uh, who's creating a very value-winning uh, platform. So these platformers, uh, they have this vertical as well as horizontal uh, aspect. In other words, vertical platformers and horizontal platformers. As for horizontal platformers, you do have like well-known people like uh, Microsoft, Intel, who's uh, savvy with computers. And then for smartphones, you have Android and Qualcomm. And if it goes for um, auto uh, people, uh, like uh, Y company, company Y, or a uh, chip company like M company M or M company Y, uh, who's savvy on uh, these uh, areas, uh, especially around autonomous driving. Uh, but um, we try to look at the overall ecosystem. We want to become a very trusted partner uh, that be able to work together with uh, both OEMs and tier one to support these platforms. So that's our business model. Uh, but um, what do we mean specifically? For example, when we talk, uh, talk about vertical platform, how do we try to get ourselves engaged with the platformers? That's something that we want to illustrate on this slide. You already did hear from Mr. Yoshioka. But for example, 
um, the software development by OEM and tier one has it's getting much more complex. And this is because we're seeing more complex system. And so therefore, there's more process required. And what's best from these people is um, to develop uh, and analyze software without having to worry about which hardware they're using. Uh, so the virtual world, like in the cyber world, uh, they'd like to utilize what they've been able to develop and which could be applied directly um, to the hardware, in other words, cars. And by doing that, this software development, uh, they'd be able to enjoy more efficiency in the development. And also there's more um, ease in upgrading. But then the real world, uh, especially around auto, you have to um, talk about, uh, for example, make sure you, there's a real time move and uh, security. Uh, you have to uh, tackle heat issues. So there are a lot of uh, traditional issues that you always have to deal with. Now, Renaissance, we are able to disaggregate hardware and software works and uh, to we be able to offer the development tools. So uh, that enables our customers to have much more ease in developing their platform. So for example, semiconductor, that's something in the physical world, uh, but then they don't really have to worry about the semiconductors uh, while they be able to develop softwares. And that's what we want to have customers be able to do. So again, this physical world, uh, any issues there would be solved by Renaissance. And by doing that, oh, uh, the customers, OEMs and tier ones would be able to concentrate on creating this platform. Uh, Mr. Chibata was also saying this, but um, so again, this hardware um, differentiating factors, it's something that we intentionally would not show. And that's what enables um, customers to see more the value we add because it makes it easier for them to go into developing softwares. And that's exactly what we want to achieve. Now, when we say software platform, what do we mean? And that's what we illustrated on this slide. Now, we used to start with um, what we have on the bottom left. In other words, individual hardwares, MCU, SOC, analog power. And on top of that, we would have the driver and uh, BSP, SDK. So the basic software or uh, some development environment. So these would all be offered in the end as a set to the customers to be used. Uh, but uh, in addition to what we've been doing conventionally, we also want to go into a new approach. So first of all, we start with a winning combo. So for example, MCU and PU uh, would be combined and uh, it's almost like a system solution. And in addition to that, uh, again, uh, customers want to uh, be able to efficiently develop a software. So to do that, they need simulation and emulation tool. And we do believe uh, there's going to be need for uh, customers to upgrade the software uh, much faster and more efficient. And that means they would need complier, schedule, scheduler, and deploy tools. So we are going to have a fulfilling suite of all these tools. And so OEMs and tier one uh, be able to just focus on creating the platform, be it the application or the OS, and they'd also be able to concentrate on developing the service. In the end, uh, we all would be able to enhance the value of the car that is being offered in the end. And uh, so we want to make sure we be able to contribute in this entire platform. So I'd like to turn to Mr. Maoka. Uh, about the winning combo strategy. So, Mr. Mauka, please. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Kataoka, thank you very much. So, from here, I, Mauka, will go on in explaining about our winning combo. So, you just heard earlier from Mr. Kataoka about winning combo. In other words, digital product like MC, uh, SOC, and also analog nowadays. Uh, by combining them, we, also, we want to offer a very useful combination. And that's really the concept behind our winning combo. Last year, what we did, well, when we first started the year, we had 
17 releases in our roadmap. Uh, but in the end, there were several more uh, projects that we were able to advance earlier. And uh, there were also some another new ideas, another new requests coming from our customers. And so in the end, we were able to accelerate the number of winning combos during 2020. So in the end, we were able to release 21 winning combos. That's an overachievement. Uh, but then uh, Mr. Kataoka also did mention at the outset ADAS or XCB, the growth areas, we were able to have half of um, these uh, 21 winning combos allocated to these growth areas, uh, like four to six each. And that was very good. And also for the analog product design in, we too were able to um, have a higher growth. And I do want to uh, make uh, sure that I speak about this a little more afterwards. Uh, there was actually this very uh, large uh, project that did have an uh, that did contribute largely to this growth, but um, we were able to make a very good result. So again, in the winning combo, here we focus more on the analog side. So first of all, here we look at the contents. So again, at the beginning, you heard about the strategy, corporate strategy from Mr. Shibata, and uh, he talked about enhancing the quality of what we'd be able to offer. Now, uh, during the strategy update meeting back in last August, of course, back then we didn't have much numbers uh, to talk about, but um, it wasn't really well balanced. The products weren't really uh, balanced, like power management IC or timing IC. Uh, were the um, areas where uh, we were sort of concentrating, to, the number were too concentrated on this area. But then um, afterwards, we actually have been able to uh, obtain design in in more more areas. So now we are better balanced. You do see this dotted line in red. And uh, this is actually one single project. So this is like an outlier. So in, in, if you exclude this single project portion, you can see that design in were obtained in various areas, various products. And also during the strategy update meeting in August, there was also one thing that we stressed. Uh, so here's the emerging markets, India and China. And at the moment, uh, we find a very good response, a good success rate. That's what I mentioned uh, back in August. But then um, now we find the momentum continuing. So India and China, both markets, uh, both countries are uh, contributing or is showing good growth. From here, allow me to go over with you a bit about our EV strategy, just briefly. Allow me to show you how we see the situation at this moment. You did hear from Mr. Kataoka, but even in this COVID uh, pandemic, EV market actually has accelerated its momentum. This was also something included in uh, Mr. Shibata's presentation, but at the moment there is this boom on ESG. In other words, there's this higher awareness in going green. So uh, carbon neutral, uh, the initiatives are being announced from many governments and companies. And so that's why we're, uh, more people are uh, paying more attention to EV. Uh, tier one OEM uh, clients that we talk with are also focusing on this area. So it is also going to be important that we focus on our XCV strategy. Now, we uh, acquired Entercell and IDT, but uh, before that, what assets did we have in this space? It was really around MCU. And within that, uh, some of the major OEMs or tier one customers that we uh, engaged, um, we were able to offer them um, products like IDPT and MOSFET. And that was the existing assets that we used to have. Uh, but then after Intercell and IDT acquisition, we were able to start offering new assets. 
be it inductive position sensor and also um, inductive position sensor, which enables you to have more flexibility in design. Uh, this is something that Mr. Shibata also introduced. And also there was sensor signal conditioner. This is uh, really about sensor conditioning, a sing signal conditioning uh, for MCUs that we were able to obtain, and also a battery management IC. This uh, is very much uh, going to be a core component uh, for accelerating our XEV strategy. In other words, we do believe we have more wider area of things we'd be able to offer as our solution. Now, how uh, have we been able to expand the scope is something that you'll be able to find on the bottom chart. So uh, first of all, um, through our SOC strategy, when we talked about our SOC strategy, we used to talk of this in this uh, axis, including customer technology integration. And so this would be where we'd be offering uh, digital products. We had more engagement with the major customers. Uh, but then eventually we've been, we started to offer more analog products. For example, the customers that Intracil and IDT would have uh, would be looking into, or would not be really looking into uh, uh, the depth, but then by being able to have engagement with more um, types of customers, we do believe uh, we are having more types of engagement. And uh, by having a better combination of what we'd be able to offer, now we're able to go into the more emerging markets. So it's not just about having more portfolio. It's about more competence that we would have in being able to have more coverage in what we'd be able to do. Uh, but in terms of application, what more can we do now? This is what the slide is trying to illustrate. So again, this market itself is enjoying a very high growth. We did have MCU competence, and to that we have battery management ICU, we have position sensor, sensor signal conditioner, uh, we have power discrete. So we have been able to combine them all now. In other words, we've been able to really grow what we'd be able to offer to, uh, to strive differentiation. Uh, we now are able to offer a winning combo. And also we are able to have a solution that is more easier to use. Now, uh, the signal chain coverage, it's not just about MCU, uh, but be it position sensor, uh, gate driver, IGBT, MOSFET, uh, we are now able to expand what we'd be able to do. For example, if it's the inverter, uh, we'd be able to cover so many things in there. And uh, for example, even in the battery management system, we are now able to, for example, go into BMIG, uh, uh, MCU, uh, BMIG, and so we're able to have wide coverage even for the battery management system. Now, inverter and battery management system, when we look into each of the applications, um, if we try to aggregate the number of contents of dollar, MCU, digital, analog, and power, for example, analog power, the contents would be several times fold of MCU or digital side contents. So um, again, we are finding this uh, very good opportunity. But then um, there's also electrification trend, especially power discrete in IGBT. Uh, this is a trend that we currently are observing. And to that, how are we to compete in the market? That's something I would like to cover on this slide. For example, XEV inverters, there's the high power space now, this is very much about optimizing the power. And so there's the mo motor, gear, inverter used. And so each individually would be optimized. That's usually the main action. But then here, you have to look at optimization at module level. Now, at the moment, uh, within IGBT, we have uh, bare die level, a uh, bare die, 
And so to fight here, we do have to collaborate with the various module manufacturers. Now, if you look at the bottom, uh, the low power, um, oftentimes we are hearing more about e-axle application. This is about uh, motor gear inverter, all integrated in the design. So now here, this we be directly be um, offering bare die in this e axle, and uh, it's important to downsize the entire powertrain. So these are the two approach that we be able to take in trying to seek the best or optimal action. And so that's really the advantage in the end that we find of being able to offer the bare die uh, for the IGBT. So um, that was the update for the automotive solution. Uh, thank you very much. So now we'd like to open the floor for Q&A for the automotive solutions. If you have a question, please uh, click on the raise hand button, and uh, we'd like to limit the number of questions to one per person. First, uh, SBI Securities, Izumi-san, please turn on your microphone and go ahead. Yes, thank you. I want to uh, go back to page 16, and I have a question regarding this uh, business. Uh, the profitability of this is uh, what I want to um, ask. Uh, your target uh, as a company is operating profit of 20% or more. Is this business going to, uh, to achieve a similar profitability? And uh, you said uh, you're starting investment in 300 millimeters and you are not going to into the module, uh, you will let partners handle the module level uh, business. Uh, you uh, talked about uh, your focus on uh, the die. So is that uh, approach decided based on the profitability? Thank you for the question. For IGBT, Rather, it's not limited to IGBT, but for the overall power discrete business, uh, this applies. The characteristics of the products or looking at the features and characteristics of the market, uh, we say that looking at our um, competitors' uh, numbers, um, uh, this is also true. Uh, compared to other products, the gross margin is um, lower. Uh, however, uh, R&D that goes into the product is also uh, relatively low. So operating margin is actually uh, better. Uh, we can get um, a very nice level of operating margin for this uh, product. So in that model, uh, we want to ensure that uh, we secure a good level of operating uh, margin so that uh, this business contributes overall to the company's uh, financials. Uh, as you said, uh, in the short term, um, right now we are working on process development uh, for 300 millimeters and we are making uh, capex for uh, the lines, uh, the launch. So in the overall power uh, discrete uh, business, uh, right now R&D and capex are relatively um, focused on IGBT. However, as I said before, uh, right now, uh, the market uh, momentum is quite strong. And uh, from the sustainability point of view, uh, this trend uh, is is expected to further uh, gain traction and momentum. So from here on, uh, we want to accelerate uh, this uh, business to capture uh, the opportunities and in the end, um, uh, grow this into profitable business. So that is our plan that uh, we've already developed. Having said that, of course, um, the volatility uh, or possible volatility in the market is uh, something we need to consider. And there may be some uncertainties, uh, especially uh, given that we are still in the midst of um, COVID-19 pandemic. So there may be some short term um, fluctuation, but uh, in the long run, we believe uh, this will be a, a certain trend. So uh, that's why we want to promote this business. Thank you. So, uh, due to time constraint, this is going to be the last question. Segura san from Daiwa Securities, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, this is Segura from Daiwa Securities. Thank you. 
Can you speak into your microphone a little more? Uh, yes, I will. This is uh, Sigura from Daiwa Securities. So I'd like to ask about design in. You earlier talked about winning combo, and uh, you said that you've been you're able to strike a better balance uh, because you're able to offer to various applications. But then looking back 2020, for example, if you look at the overall application of design in, how did it look like back in 2020? For example, ADAS, EV, some of the potentials. Uh, there's a lot of potentials here. Do you find more of that now? And as we look into 2021, what is your strategy behind? Um, what gaining the digital in which applications would you be looking at uh, yes uh, i guess i need to answer that this is kataoka so again uh, back in 2020 this is something that uh, mr shibata did go over in his presentation uh there was this very large um, well this soc and it's, it's really adas it's also a large soc which was connected gateway uh, this is about, uh, it comes from e-architecture evolution. It's a central computing. And uh, so again, SOC really had a very large proportion. Now, as we try to look into the new three area, ADAS, EV, and also um, new architecture, the gateway, and also the surrounding areas, MCU and domain control MCU, uh, we do believe we are able to have better balanced coverage there. Now, the trend that we observed in 2020 probably will stay in 2020, but then because we were able to large a very win, large deal and design in last year, uh, we do believe um, um, we probably would not be keeping the same type of a Kager momentum. Of course, we do have set a target for ourselves, uh, but again, this year, we want to expand winning combo, especially for XEV. Uh, we really are trying to add IGBT to MCU, where our core competence are also. Um, so these are the areas where we want to focus in a winning a deal and design in uh, so that we be able to build up our numbers. Uh, so if I may add a little more. So XEV wasn't uh didn't have much part in the design in in 2020 but you expect more design in for 2021 well um we already are uh getting a pretty good numbers of design in for xcv uh, we do want to accelerate that in 2021 that is true it goes back to uh, page 11 i can't uh, find it now uh, but um, there were three uh, that we released back in 2020 uh, but that really tells you that um, that's really going to contribute in creating a business for 2021 for XCV. Thank you very much.